The, uh, the authorization uh, from the Office of uh, Countering Weapons of Mass Destruction uh, is uh, set to expire uh, next year. Uh, in preparation, Senator Portman and I introduced a bill that reauthorizes uh, CWMD office uh, and empowers the newly created Office of Health Security at uh, DHS. The bill clarifies roles uh, and responsibilities uh, for both offices and adds important accountability and oversight measures. Secretary Mayorkas, could you explain uh, to this committee how the, exploration, uh, the expiration of the authorization for CWMD would impact it uh, if uh, it expires, and particularly uh, how, imp how important the legislation is to deal with local, tribal, and territorial partners uh, on this critical issue? Um, uh Mr. Chairman, the, um, the Office of Countering Weapons of Mass Destruction is of vital importance to the Department of Homeland Security. I think if we look back in time and we see the use of uh, chemical weapons uh, in Syria and the tragedies that that inflicted on the people uh, there, that's one powerful example, and we don't have to look that far back in history to understand the importance of the office. Just the fact uh, that the potential, the specter of the use of nuclear weapons uh, was uh, discussed in public fora uh, in light of Russia's unprovoked aggression against Ukraine speaks to the criticality of this office, and we do hope uh, that uh, the bipartisan uh, bill that you have presented uh, is passed. We need this office reauthorized. Thank you, Secretary. Director Abizad, uh, how has the threat from weapons of mass destruction increased or decreased over the last five years? Uh, the, the threat that terrorists would use WMD and particularly CBRN um, capabilities, I think, has been sustained over that five-year time period, certainly. Very good. Secretary Marcus, uh, you ordered uh, an internal review of inter uh, at DHS after the tragic shootings uh, in Buffalo and Uvalde to assess whether the department ha was effectively using its resources uh, to address domestic terrorism and targeted violence. Um, as a result of that review that you did, you announced uh, the appointment of uh, Nick Rasmussen as the full-time counterterrorism uh, coordinator. Uh, what goals have you asked him to accomplish, and, and what's the time frame for him to achieve uh, those goals? Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Nick Rasmussen um, comes with um, impeccable credentials uh, to be this counterterrorism coordinator for the Department of Homeland Security. He used to be the director of the National Counterterrorism Center and just a distinguished uh, career. Um, what I've asked him to do in the first instance is really take a look at our counterterrorism efforts across the department and make sure that we are being as impactful and effective uh, as possible. One of the efforts that I have across the department in every mission set is to drive greater uh, cohesion so that we ha our impact is maximized. That is the first thing that I have asked him to take a look at, and I'm actually meeting with him in a few days to discuss the setting of a timeline uh, and uh, incremental goals along the way, and I look forward to discussing that with you. All right, we'll look forward to that. Certainly we do have to have a coordinator overseeing all this, so I appreciate uh, the efforts that you're making in that area. Uh, the administration uh, just released uh, an updated strategy and implementation plan on countering biological uh, threats. Uh, this new strategy implements recommendations uh, learned from the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic uh, and the monkeypox public health emergency. Certainly uh, global shortcomings in preparedness for the pandemic and biosecurity uh, may inspire adversaries to develop and use biological weapons in the future. Uh, certainly a major concern for all of us. Secretary Mayorkas, could you discuss how DHS is working to implement the national biodefense strategy and how has the creation of the Office of Health Security better aligned DHS efforts uh, in this space? Um, Mr. Chairman, the, um, uh, that strategy really speaks uh, uh, of a whole of society approach. It's not something that the federal government uh, can do uh, alone, but we need uh, state and local partners and private citizens, nonprofit organizations, academia. So it's, it's a very holistic, uh, inclusive approach uh, to the problem, and that is the approach that we are taking uh, in the department uh, through uh, CWMD, the Countering Weapons of Mass Destruction Office, uh, the Office of Health Affairs, and importantly, uh, our Office of Science and Technology with the research 
and development uh, that it spearheads. And I'm grateful to this committee for, um, for really moving forward uh, with the uh, confirmation of Dmitry Kutsinov as our new undersecretary for the Office of Science and Technology. <coughs> So it's really a very all of society approach and, and um, uh, our leader of the Office of, <coughs> of Health uh, Affairs, our, our chief medical officer, um, is a, a tremendous leader in identifying what are the greatest threats that are imminent or uh, upon us and developing uh, a strategy to address it. He was instrumental uh, in our protocols to, uh, to address COVID-19 uh, in immigration detention centers along the southwest border, working with border communities to, de to develop uh, a real infrastructure to address that. And so we're taking a all of department approach in, in the context of an all of society approach that the strategy calls for. Well, that's good. We're, this uh, committee will will deal with this issue uh, extensively over the next couple of years. So, we'll look forward to working closely uh, with your team uh, to to address uh, the the challenge and the threat.